Now, every original Zimbabwean has got a totem. Now, a totem represents your origin, represents your bloodline, your ancestry. It helps you keep track of your identity. And these totems are usually represented by animals. Now, if you ask me what my totem is, my totem is Sokoa Fuanaka. That's my totem. And the animal that represents my totem, my original totem, is monkey. That's my totem. So I am a monkey. I am called Sokoa Fanaka, and other people call me Manuwe. And usually what that means is if someone is greeting me and they want to show respect and appreciation of me, then they will greet me by my totem instead of using my name, Bertha, to say, oh, hi, how are you, Bertha? If they want to show deep respect, the ultimate respect is for them to greet me by my totem. They will say, oh, hello, Manuwe, oh, hello, Soko, you know, things like that. So that's respect. That's how... We identify each other in Zimbabwe. The other animals that represent totems in Zimbabwe are zebra, buffalo, um, elephant, all types of animals. So depending on where, which part of Zimbabwe you come from, your origin, depending on who your ancestors are, that is what your totem is. You are given that totem. And this is also important in that it prevents incest. You know, because you don't want to marry somebody you are related to. There is this thing that if you want to get married, if you meet a man, if you meet a woman who is of marrying age, before you even take things further, you have to find out what their totem is. Because if you've got the same totem, if you share the same totem, suppose I meet a man and they tell me that, oh, their totem is also Soko or their totem is monkey. Then what that means in our culture is I can't get married to that man because we are related. We come or we belong to the same bloodline. We belong to the same ancestry. So we are family, even though we are distant, but the bloodline is still the same. The ancestry is still the same. So if we get married, we are committing a cultural sin. We can't get married in our culture. And there are times when you can marry somebody with whom you share the same totem. If you are like distant relatives, if you only share the same totem, but you are kind of distant relatives. You can get married, but they have to they have to perform some kind of ritual. Something has to happen first. Culturally, they have to perform a, some kind of traditional ceremony in order for that to happen. But obviously, if you are close relatives, you can't intermarry. So this is something that I like about the Zimbabwean culture is the preservation of that identity. You know, that ancestry. It makes you proud to know who you are, it gives you the sense of belonging, that sense of pride, that sense of identity. So how you come to know about this bloodline, about what is expected in the culture, about what kind of things that you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing, those things are passed down through storytelling. I remember when I was growing up in Zimbabwe, during every school holiday, my father would take us Kumusha, you know, to the village to see our uncles, you know, my grandmother, my grandfather. So every evening after our chores, after eating, we would sit by the fireplace and my grandmother or my grandfather would tell us stories, stories about our ancestors. They would tell us folklore. They would tell us things about our culture, things that were important and they would emphasize certain things to us. So that's the bit that i like about the zimbabwean culture it's the storytelling because things are passed down from one generation to the next through storytelling and it is through those stories that we preserve our culture that we get to know our culture a little bit better it is through storytelling that we get to know what is expected of us things that we can do things we can't do as far as our culture our traditions is concerned so I like that bit about the Zimbabwean culture. And of course, some of the stories are folklore, they are exaggerated, they are fiction, but they are told for a reason. They are told for a purpose. And that purpose is to educate. And the other thing as well that I like about the Zimbabwean culture or the things that enriches Zimbabweans or the culture is kind of a continuation of what I've just said is almost everyone, if not everyone in Zimbabwe has got two homes. What I mean is if you live in the city, like if you live in Harare, or in my case, I grew up in Chinoy, a small town. If you live in town or if you've got a home in the city, you need to have or you're expected to have another home in the village, in your rural area. If you don't have a home in the rural area, it means you are lost. You don't know your roots. That's just the Zimbabwean way. This is because in Zimbabwe, we emphasize that bloodline I was talking about. We emphasize our ancestry and 
you know, in the olden days, our ancestors, they didn't live in the city before colonization. There was no, you know, cities like houses, the way they are built these days. We had mud houses, houses that were made of, you know, thatched roofs and stuff. Because of colonization, there have been a lot of changes when it comes to where people live, you know, the movement. People started moving to the cities and, you know, houses were built in a certain way. People were moved to and fro in the cities and towns. People were displaced, things like that. But every Zimbabwean have got their original home in the rural areas where their ancestors came from, where their ancestors originated from. So if you're a Zimbabwean, if you don't have that rural home, or if you don't know where you come from, or you don't know where your roots are, you are said to be lost. So that is an important aspect of the Zimbabwean culture. Every Zimbabwean, or almost every Zimbabwean, I'm saying almost because there are some people who have chosen to live in the rural areas and they don't have another home in the city or in the towns. So they only have one home in the rural areas and those are fine. They are not judged in any way because they have remained in their original home. But if you've got a town home or if you have got a home in the city and you don't know where your rural home is or you don't have any connection to your rural home, then you are said to be lost. People kind of look down on you, so you need to have that rural home or you, at least you need to have some kind of connection with your rural home. You don't necessarily have to live there on a permanent basis, but you just need to know where your roots are. Another thing about the Zimbabwean culture that enriches its people is to do with the rituals and the ceremonies. And some of these ceremonies relate to weddings and some of these ceremonies relate to funerals. I always say that if I'm ever going to remarry, it doesn't matter where my husband comes from. There are certain things that I feel or that I would want him to honor when it comes to my Zimbabwean culture and tradition. For me to feel like a wife, like I'm properly married to him because it's ingrained in me, you know, those rituals and traditions. For example, in the Zimbabwean culture, there are certain traditional expectations that have to be met according to the Zimbabwean culture during a marriage ceremony. And those traditions serve a few purposes. They bring people together. They're just kind of like a, a token. Most of you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Rohora. Of course, there is debate when it comes to Rohora or Lobola because some people are complaining that there are people who are taking advantage of this ceremony or this ritual. This is when the husband or the husband-to-be goes to pay a token or bride price. To the woman's parents. Unfortunately, this lobola ritual is now being abused by some. They now see it as a way of swindling the husband or the husband to be. They are now seeing it as a way to extort, you know, some money from their husband. And that's not the purpose of lobola. The purpose of lobola is just to acknowledge each other. It's supposed to be a token. It's not supposed to be a way of the woman's family to get rich through the husband. That's not what it's about. So. The people who are misusing this ritual are the ones who are ruining things. But for me, this is an important aspect of the Zimbabwean culture. And I feel that this ritual or this culture, this custom or this tradition should be preserved because that's what makes us who we are as Zimbabweans. It's an important part of our culture. It's an important part of our tradition. So really, if there are any changes to be made, those changes should be made to preserve the ritual in the manner that it was intended from the beginning.